It's a fan fiction universe. The election was stolen from Abel, you know? It's like, all, all the, anything, anything you want to fucking make up. <laughs> <laughs> here. My name is James Miller and we're here for a very SCP episode once again of Biblical Proportions and I am joined with uh, Peter O'Donoghue. Uh, now do you mean uh, Biblical Proportions as in like there's two versions of it where we're going to change characters halfway through or um, that that's up to you. Um, there's going oh, to be a lot that. of death and slaughter and uh we won't get too much into the details, but it's definitely there. Yeah, there's the old lore boys, and there's the new lore boys. That's the right. part of the separation. Uh, obviously, right. we should address the elephant in the room that once again, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic restrictions, um, we couldn't be there for Ethan, uh, and we have suffered yet one more autoerotic asphyxiation accident, so he will not <laughs> be joining us uh, for this episode. Yeah, he actually got married, which we were very happy about. Yes. And... <laughs> <laughs> and he, now that he had sex once, he's too cool for us, so he'll never be back, right? Yeah, yeah. precisely. He, uh, I mean, we do, we don't even know. He got married, like, two hours ago. I don't know how long it takes to have sex. Uh, two days ago, I don't know how long it takes to have sex. I don't even know if he's done by now. No, yeah, anything could happen, to be honest. Yeah. Yep. So, today, we are going to get into Cain and Abel. Uh, it was a request from, I believe, uh, Bison, well, the good SCP, as he calls himself in our server. And yeah, he it's would. A pretty cool story. So but you they, also like stumbled across Cain and Abel at some point in like uh, other SCP, your your other deep dives into the SCP universe where you were like yeah. looking into into this. You're like, oh, Cain and Abel's really cool. I'd like to do an episode <laughs> about this. I think I might have brought up Cain in like my my just going over all the like standard SCPs because these are like really popular ones. Uh, yeah. Cain and Abel, they're they're like part of the original fandom and like in the anything in the first 1000 scps are like pretty og and these ones are scp 073 and 076 so they they were written in pretty early into the to the fanfic i see yeah uh, they would be uh in some would say they're part of like the genesis of scp <laughs> in some capacity right yes exactly i see exactly and uh, before we get into the whole SCP side of things, I think I talked about Kane a long time ago, but Kane and Abel, uh, if you hadn't heard, they're, they're in the Bible. So we're going to talk about the biblical version of them so we can set the foundation for what the SCP version of them is. Okay. Yeah. So I know a bit about that story, like very, very little. Like I've not, okay. you know, I've uh, never actually read any parts of the Bible. A lot of people do. Uh, I'll walk us through it, and if you have anything uh, to, to add on top of it, uh, please do. Yeah, it's like the sixth best-selling book on Earth after all the Harry Potters, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, Cain was a herder of sheep. Abel was a tiller of soil. Can I make it any more obvious? Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, one wore vans, the other committed... Fratricide? Fratricide? Frat fratricide, yeah. Fratricide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Abel makes an offering of his best sheep to God, the big G, God. And Cain brought the fruit from his soil. So they brought what both of their professions, they brought the best of the best. Uh, God, he, he was cool with the sheep, but he didn't care for the broccoli. This is what I find fucked up about Old Testament God. Yeah. What do you mean? He's a farmer. Like, what's he supposed <laughs> to bring? Like, and Old Testament's God, like, nah. Sorry, homie. Yeah. Oh, he's like, like one generation removed from original sin, right? Or something like that. So, like, he's still pissed off at the family. Yeah, I think I think that's right. And it, I'm not a Bible uh, specialist by by any stretch of the imagination, but he. Yeah. I did read through the passage, and I do have a couple passages for us after. And <laughs> do you have the numbers? <laughs> uh, I don't have the numbers. No, unfortunately, ah, no, like but... Genesis two six or anything like that. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. So God's like, great job, great job, uh, Abel. I love your sheep. Those sheep were great. Cain, broccoli. It was okay. Uh, so Cain got a little, tough, kinda... little tough in the middle. Yeah. Cain was resenting his little brother now. Cain, like, why Why does my brother get all the... I, I did my job the best I could. Why does God like him and not like me? 
So Cain, uh, here comes the passages. And Cain said to Abel, his brother, let us go out to the field. And when they were in the field, Cain rose against Abel and his brother killed him. And the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Like, what a teenager. Oh, that's where you get that. That's where you get that. I, I like how Old Testament God uh, clearly picks favorites and yes. is somehow not omnis- omniscient. So he do- some, doesn't know where Abel's at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he does, though. And that, in oh, the next oh, section... Oh, fucking with him. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah exactly. The God, type of God to fuck with you. And he said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the soil. And so cursed shall you be by the soil that gaped with its mouth to take your brother's blood from your hand. If you till the soil, it will no longer give you strength. A restless wanderer shall you be on earth. So pretty, pretty intense. And, yeah. and Cain says to the Lord, my punishment is too great to bear. Now you've driven me this day from the soil and must hide from your presence. I shall be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain shall suffer sevenfold vengeance. And this will be important later. And the okay. Lord said, <laughs> <laughs> Note down sevenfold vengeance. Just, just Yeah. Yeah. Is he going to be avenged sevenfold? Is that what that's from? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Why, okay. yeah, yeah, he killed my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lord set a mark upon Cain so that whoever found him would not slay him. So that's the the background, brother. <laughs> it was the world first any percent murder. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And the, bro- <laughs> the brother did it. Uh, so Cain's the bad guy there, and then Abel was kind of the innocent, cheap tender that got killed. Yeah, uh, it's it's not. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna put this one on Old Testament God though. <laughs> All right. Like, what are there four people on Earth at this point? Yeah, he's got to keep his day interesting, right? Like, well, I'm going to praise one and not the other. Let's see how this goes. I guess he's just figuring things out, having only created four humans. Or oh, he created two, and then they created two more. Right. Uh, so he's just like, oh yeah, let's see how this plays out. And he's he's you know still getting his feet wet. Yep, yep. And so we could start. Um, there's there's similarities between these Cain and Abel's. Uh, and the Cain and Abel in the SCP universe, but there's no confirmation that these are the guys from the Bible. Uh, some fan theories say, like, well, you have SCP, I think it's 373, God. Why don't you ask God, the guy who makes everybody feel all warm and fuzzy anytime they have a long conversation with him. <laughs> uh, but then there's also people who say that that God is not the real God, and he's just a he's a hoax, and he has some sort of like psychological effect on people, and that's why he's an SCP. He, and He's not actually God, but it, 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 it's all mixed up. All, all to say is we can't get a confirmation that this is the real Cain and Abel from the Bible, but they're definitely inspired by them. Okay. Yeah. So we can start with SCP-073, uh, and that is Cain. Uh, he's Euclid, so he, he he can be dangerous, but keep like he's pretty easily contained. He, he's not about to escape anywhere. Okay. Yeah. He appears to be heavily tanned male of uh, Arabic or Mi- Middle Eastern descent in his early 30s. Yep, makes sense. Yep. He, that was a it, setting for the original Bible. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, before the redux. Yeah, yeah e- exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's 185 centimeters tall or six foot one or uh, one one hundredth of a football field. And... <laughs> I don't even know if that's true. Uh, you know, it, it'd be one uh, fiftieth because like six feet is two yards. Okay. Basically, and as far as I understand, it's it's a hundred yards as a football field. Wait, well, why don't they use feet instead of yards? Where did yards come in? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I forgot about yards. I don't, all that stuff's crazy. Yeah. Like a yardstick is like the is the long ruler that like nuns beat students with, right? Right. That's right. a three foot. That's a yeah. That's a three foot ruler. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A th- a- any ruler longer is illegal, and in Canadian right. law, you can't own a ruler longer than three feet. Right. <laughs> or else it's considered an assault ruler, and then you know then you have to keep it in a safe offsite yeah. somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah, you keep it. <laughs> keep a license for it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can you imagine the cops pull you over and check your trunk, and you've got like a you've got a yardstick, but it's like three foot six, 
and then it's still marked, and the cops use a tape measure to measure it out. <laughs> yeah, you have to go talk to a psychologist for a couple of days before that. They know you can have uh, one of those hard type rulers, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. D- definitely. <laughs> so he has black hair, blue eyes. Um, something really notable about him is his arms, legs, spinal cord, and shoulder blades all have this unknown metal substance on them. So he kind of looks cyborgy. Oh. Um, yeah, they later identified this as beryllium bronze. Um, he's really, really old. We don't know exactly how old, though. Is beryllium bronze a real thing? I think so, yeah. I think it's used in, like... According to the SCP Foundation, it was used in, like, rituals and stuff like that. I have no idea in real life if it's used or how it's used. Mm. Yeah. Uh, there's a symbol on his forehead. Um, it's of Sumerian origin. It's never been sh- translated. And if you even mention it or bring it up at all, uh, he will not speak on it. He gets kind of stressed out about it. Yeah, it's like something he did to himself in prison. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the Sumerian symbol is three teardrops next to his eye, of course. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, it means you killed your brother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he has, like, damage above his eyebrows. They're like, what's that mean? He's like, Sumerian. <laughs> so Cain is actually, even though he's the murderer um, in the in the cool book, he is actually, in the SCP version, pretty generally helpful and pleasant to all staff members. Uh, he's a nice guy. He's pretty harmless. Uh, he has an amazing memory, like, to the point where he can recall historical events in great detail. Uh, he can speak many languages after just hearing them, like, for the first time. Uh, this is probably also his curse, because he can't forget what he did to his brother way back when. Ah. Uh, yeah. It's like, he'll never oh, forget he kinda- what he did. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, yeah. I, you'll never forget what she did. But, yeah. Yeah. Because he kind of is like biblical Cain, like if he's been wandering for centuries. Yeah. I think one of the stories on where they found him, like he was attacked by a bunch of, um, attacked by a bunch of like bandits in an alley kind of thing. And that's how they found him. And this is kind of showed off his immortal, uh, he's immortal. And because he's immortal, uh, he has this unique power. And this is also how he's immortal. Uh, any attack inflicted on him is returned to the attacker, like a hundred percent. Oh, he's got thorns from Diablo too, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so okay. if he, <laughs> except he feels the pain, but he doesn't get the damage. So if you pinched his nip, then your nip would be pinched instead, and you'd feel it. You... He'd feel it. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's kind of good. Yeah. A couple of mutual tweaks in the bedroom. Exactly. Exactly. If you like cut off his arm. His arm would stay attached, and he would feel the pain, but your arm would be severed. Oh. So he, like, can't be hurt at all. Like, you can't do anything to him. It'll just be reflected, but he feels all the pain at the same time. And I think this is the... If anyone tries to hurt Cain, then I'll reflect this sevenfold kind of thing, and you're not allowed yeah. to die. Yeah. Yeah. Cut off all seven of your arms, mugger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so he feels the pain... Um, and another thing that makes him really, really dangerous, or before I go on too far, like he got attacked in that alley. Uh, he was found with just all the bandits around him dead. Like they shot him, but really just shot themselves. Yeah. Uh, tried to stab him, really just stabbed themselves. And he was just kind of in the middle of it all and, and was happily taken in by the SCP Foundation. Okay. Yeah. Um, something that also makes him really dangerous, like probably way more than any of his other things, because uh, if as long as you don't attack him, you're not going to get hurt, and he's not malicious or vicious at all. So if you just leave him alone, you're fine. But what makes him really just, dangerous? If you, yeah, like let's speculate here. All right. If if let's say he was nuked, would he absorb all of that, and then just like would North Korea just blow up on its own? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how that would work. Actually, like it, maybe it would be the plane that dropped the nuke. Uh, cause it seems like if someone shoots him with a gun, the person who is holding the gun gets the bullet back. Right. So um, it's like the two guys who turned the keys are the guys who get <laughs> nuked in like the, in the, in the, in the office or yeah, like in they, the White House. <laughs> they just blow up and there's a one yard mushroom cloud above them. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just little, like tiny little things. 
Yeah, we had to set up a cafeteria exclusion zone. You can't use that microwave for the next 8,000 years. <laughs> the water cooler is completely poisoned. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. What makes him really, really dangerous, though, is that anytime... He used to be a guy who, who was a farmer. But now, anytime he goes close to plant life, uh, it all just withers and dies instantly. Oh, okay. So if you just like drug him across the earth you would cause like a natural disaster because so many plants would die um well what's his range like would it just be like a man-sized line through like a crop or does it kill <laughs> everything <laughs> like the the artistic things of him like where there's a background everything is just wilted around like maybe as far as you can see or oh, okay i see or okay. uh maybe like 10 yards to either side and if we're using yards for this episode yeah, yeah. If that's the <laughs> if that's the measurement that we're using now, yeah. Um. So that's what makes him really dangerous, and they have to contain him because if he just wandered around, he might kill like the last big redwood tree or the someone's whole corn crop or whatever else he got close enough to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh that's Kane. That's who he is. He's pretty nice. Uh, he was actually even brought up by the scp foundation as a potential backup for all of their information because he can remember things so well like what if we just read him all our files and then he never he'll never die so oh yeah, yeah. that is a good idea yeah. and you can, yeah you can't you can't kill him so it's not even like it's not even like a server farm that can crash or like lose power or whatever he's like way more reliable exactly you just can't but let him near your house plants yeah, that should, be his that should be his TED talk from inside, like, a glass dome. I was just like, I've remembered everything I've ever done. Come with me on my journey. <laughs> Wearing his jeans and blazer, just walking back and forth, his little metal hand sticking out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so next up is Abel. Uh, we've talked a bit about him. He's not as, uh, as nice as his brother. Uh so Abel, uh, I believe it's spelt A B E L uh, in uh, the SCP as, universe. As far as I know, in the Bible, it's spelled that way. Okay. Well. okay. Yeah. It's not Abel, as in though he can just do a thing. Yeah. Right. You exactly. know, or that, that's where we. That's where we, that's the etymology of the suffix, right? It's uh, you know, capable. It's like named after Abel because he's in the Bible, and like that's <laughs> where we got the English word. <laughs> yes, capable of dying by his brother's hand. Or just able of like your it, 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 you have ability, right? It's just right. like yeah, like it's based on uh, the the Bible's his competence for sheep. Like God thought they were good. <laughs> Make sh sheep are fuckable if you ask people in Wales. I think. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so Abel is a Middle Eastern human in his late twenties with black hair. Uh, he has gray eyes and olive skin. Um, he's covered in tattoos of arcane and occult markings, uh, like there's demon faces on him, and uh, you can think of like Yakuza type uh, Japanese, um, like oh yeah, okay, people. full sleeve shirt of tattoos sort of thing. Yeah. Exactly, sick. Um, he so SCP zero seven six, like the SCP is the man, but it's also his containment cube because they kind of go together uh, hand in hand. The cube is uh, 076 1 and the man is 076 2. So anytime you kill Abel, uh, which is very, very, very hard to do, uh, he will respawn in the cube after a random amount of time. So uh, if you kill him, he's pretty immortal too. Um, if you kill him, he's going to come back. Uh, it sometimes it's as short as two days, sometimes it's as long as a year, but he will come back. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he is like this muscular dude, and he is mean as hell. Uh, he can pull swords out from another dimension. Uh, he does this so quickly that the swords look like they materialize from nowhere. He just pulls them out from like a portal behind him, with, like godly strength and speed. It's funny how Kane seems to have a lot in common with his biblical counterpart, and Abel is just like an anime protagonist. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, he's crazy. He tries to break out a bunch of times. Uh, He's, like, bloodthirsty. Uh, he can kill many, many, many men in a short amount of time. Uh, some some men, like, who are trained a lot in hand-to-hand -hand combat were able to stand their ground for a couple minutes, and he respects those guys. He'll, like, nod at them and then walk on to the next guy and kill them. Okay, classic, of course. Yeah, 
Yeah. He's like the predator, basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like, fighting seems to be the only thing he knows. Um, maybe because he died uh, in bloodshed, he, he wants to inflict that on everyone around him. Um, yeah. So he has been killed a few times, uh, only to respond within his coffin. And uh, I'll go over the few times he's been, been killed. Yeah. Um, one time he escapes and everybody was shooting at him with heavy caliber machine guns. Um, he was taking shots, even like puncturing his lungs and everything, but he was still alive, uh, just soldiering on and slaughtering. Uh, they managed to close the room um, behind him and in front of him and completely locked it and filled the room with water. And even though he had punctured lungs and everything, he slowly drowned uh, much longer than a normal man, but he did drown. So water can kill him. That That's funny that they drown him because I was going to say, oh, it sounds like a bulkhead, which is the thing that it's the thing that I think prevents a ship from sinking. They have like multiple bulkheads within right. that like fill with water and then you like slam the door. Right. Basically. So uh, that uh, that's interesting. They did the exact same thing. Yeah. It's like where you put the Irish people in the Titanic. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. Uh, one time he was crushed under a 13.6 metric ton piece of elevator equipment. Okay. Uh, That's T O N N E for anybody who's listening, by the way. That's a metric ton. Yeah. That's about 60,000 yards, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like if you, if you can roll up two football fields. And like stack them on top of each other, just all the yeah. astroturf and just all that fake grass shit. Yeah, that, that's how much that would weigh. Yeah. Uh, another time he was being shot in the chest so much that there was like a cavity carved out, which still didn't kill him. But someone threw a thermite TH3 grenade into the cavity in his chest, and it burned bright enough that it killed him. Also, that's a great throw. Yeah. Right. That's like some that's some like baseball shit right there where it's just like oh yeah you can just hit like a fixed point with yep. a grenade. <laughs> yep. It was those YouTube guys from Dude Bro Do or whatever with the the ping pong balls just oh, shot it yeah, right into yeah, his yeah, chest. Yeah. yeah. They, they 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 drop a ping pong pa- ping pong ball off a dam and get yeah. it right into a solo cup that's like 900 feet below. <laughs> exactly. And then a half god burns to death. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe, dude. Hit that notification bell. Oh yeah, yeah. what are those guys called? Uh, this dude something. Yeah, dude, something. I can't remember. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But I know yeah, those guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, during the worst breach to date in Containment Area 25, uh, which used to house 076 or Abel, uh, they had to detonate its on-site warhead as a last attempt. So there was a nuclear bomb. Uh, it completely destroyed the entire place, uh, all of the people working there, and SCP-076 survived. Um, even they don't even have like a fire alarm system for when an SCP gets out that people actually manage to get killed. Like w- when I was working like pre pandemic downtown, my building that I worked in had like, I think 15,000 people in it. Right. And when the fire alarm goes off, I was on the street in two minutes and it's just yeah. like SCP gets out and they're going to detonate a nuke as a last resort and they can't figure out how to get like people to, they don't have like the guy with the whatever, like the designated cubicle person to direct you. <laughs> No, no, they just scrap everyone and anyone who's ever worked there. Oh, Jesus. So, yeah. The benefits, though, are so good. 80% <laughs> off dental. It's worth working at the SCP yeah. Foundation. You have to sign off on the life insurance because they, they won't give you that completely, but uh, they'll, they'll yeah. send, send send some <laughs> like flowers to your family's house. Or Uninsurable because what even constitutes an accident? At yeah. the SCP Foundation, it's like, yeah, I don't know. You like went to another dimension full of cats and drowned or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that an accident? Oh my god! Imagine the smell of that dimension. I just thought of. Yeah, there'd be a lot of cat poop. Oh yeah. Uh, in one universe or storyline, Cain and Abel actually meet each other. Um, but before I, I go into that, Abel's cube uh, is now kept at the bottom of the ocean, at a place there. Because he can drown, so if he were to somehow escape, he wouldn't have enough time to swim to the surface um, without dying. Yeah. Hey, so. man, don't 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 make us 
Don't make us open that screen door we got on that cube for you. <laughs> then you're finished, buddy. Yeah, imagine you waiting two years to come back to life just to open your door and get flooded. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yikes. Yeah, so in Cain and Abel were going to meet each other, and the Foundation asked Cain if he would meet his bloodthirsty brother, because the Foundation being who they are, they like to experiment, and how? why not experiment with the world's first murder and... Uh, Cain and Abel meeting each other once again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Cain agreed uh, after much thought, but he only agreed with one caveat. That the foundation is not allowed to end the testing before Cain says yes. Cain wanted to be the person to say, when we stop this, you can't pull the plug till I'm ready. Okay. Yeah. So they put Cain in the submarine or the, elevator or however you get that far underneath the ocean yeah they tied two cinder blocks to his ankles and just tossed them tossed them off of a mafia yacht and they were just like good luck dude yeah and it, the ocean tried to drown him but it actually drowned the ocean uh <laughs> <laughs> yep uh, poseidon took a big old lungful of water there but so this is a pretty simple experiment. So Kane would stay in Abel's containment cube. They just put him right in that cube and wait for him to respawn next. It just so happened that they caught Kane on one of his death cycles, so he wasn't awake yet. Or sorry, Abel in one of his death cycles. He wasn't awake yet. Kane goes all the way down, goes into uh, his brother's apartment while his brother's not there yet, and just sits down. Yeah, classic bum. <laughs> yeah, he gets he finished off his Pringles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, he cuts his mouth on the on a Pringle, and then the actual Pringles guy does too. Like, yeah, but on every single can in the planet, the yeah. Pringles guy now has a scar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Kane going into uh, the tomb actually caused the brother to be summoned much quicker than normal, just after a few minutes. Uh, and Kane and Abel were seeing each other for the first time in probably millennia. Does he do? Does it describe how he, that he materializes? Does he like regrow quickly, or does he just like out of nowhere, kind of like his swords? There's like a coffin on in the containment cube, and he always like wakes up out of oh. that. So he's oh, so okay. He, you can p picture the grating of like a stone coffin, and this okay. muscular man, completely tattooed with like red eyes, and he's fierce and angry. Steps out, and he sees his the guy who killed him all the, and set him up for all these years it of suffering. It's just like he just shows up randomly. It kind of makes me think of Kramer from Seinfeld, <laughs> where he just like dies and is reborn, and then just barges into Jerry's apartment, but, like at, at, at like with no rhyme or reason. <laughs> Except this Kramer can kill you very, very, very easily. Yeah. So millennia had gone by, and Kane is seeing his brother for the first time in many years, and Kane starts apologizing. Uh, Abel swiftly pulls a sword out of nowhere and chops off Kane's head. But Cain, all of the damage is always reflected. So uh, Abel's own head falls off and he dies. And Cain sits back down, waits for him to come back again. And this would be like the, the longest mea culpa <laughs> like, conversation on, on the planet. Yeah, and over and over again, this just keeps happening. Uh, Abel, there's no, he, he doesn't even care. He just wants to attack his brother, so... Every few minutes or however long it takes for him to respond, Kane is waiting, and he gets his... And he, Kane feels all this pain, too, so it's just suffering on both sides. Does um, he retain his memories as well? Like, does he is, does he eventually realize that this is not going to fucking work? <laughs> I think, like, he's just so furious and angry, like, it doesn't okay. matter. Yeah. Uh, but he, I think he does retain his energy. So it happened over and over and over again. And after many deaths, uncountable deaths, both Cain and Abel were exhausted. Uh, feeling They both felt their own death many times, and even though Cain didn't die, he felt the pain. Uh, so they actually fell into an embrace after all this, when he could barely lift his swords anymore. And Abel asked Cain, why would you kill your own brother through tear-welled eyes? And then Cain just responds that these were actions of a younger, more foolish man, and that's not who he is anymore. And in their reconciliation, holding each other, they both crumble to dust, giving their souls peace at last. Aww, that's yeah. cute. 
Yeah. I, just at that crescendo moment here, I do want to apologize to our listeners. If you can start to hear my AC, my apartment's getting too hot, so I need to turn this on. That, I don't think it'll come up. I'm sorry for the rest of the episode. <laughs> uh, so this happened uh, in one of the SCP stories titled, Maybe God Will Forgive Us If We Both Beg. And uh, that was fanfic. That's a really good title. Yeah. And I, I encourage all of you guys to go read it. I took bits and pieces from it, but there is more. Uh, to it than that it's just only a page long or so uh so Cain and Abel do still exist in the SCP canon uh but this is a fitting end to their arc in my opinion and many people's opinions so usually when you bring up uh their story this is how people like to see it as ending yeah Cain and Abel Neo was like not nearly as good because they like they kind of changed their characters when they came back yeah exactly <laughs> but if you want to write your own SCP and you want to include Cain or Abel they exist infinitely because it's a fan fiction universe, so you can get more out of that. Yeah. yeah it's a fan fiction universe. The election was stolen from Abel, you know? It's like, all, all the, anything anything you want to fucking make up. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. So that was my episode on SCP-073 and 076, uh, Cain and Abel. Say two. I, I really wish Ethan hadn't had that unfortunate strangling accident. We could have gotten another 10 minutes out of this fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it was good fun uh I, I always find whenever it's just the two of us we stay on track a lot more i i wrote this yeah. originally a couple of weeks ago when it was supposed to be all three of us but I, that's okay i had i had good fun all the same uh so if you want to find us online my name is james miller and you can find us on loreboys.com and that is is exactly what you find. Go to the about page. Find us on Discord. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, Ethan usually does this part. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where can I find you, Pete? Uh, you can find at Loreboys Podcast on Instagram. That's where you get your title cards. Um, Theloreboys.com. Um, go to the about section. It's like the most important section. You can find um, our Patreon, um, uh, which is Loreboys. Uh, it's, excuse me. Uh, Patreon.com slash Theloreboys. Uh, you can find our merch, which is T Public uh, slash The Lore Boys. Uh, we haven't really shilled that in a while. They keep sending me emails like, "Hey Pete, update your store." I'm just like, "Leave me the fuck alone!" <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll sell T-shirts when I want to. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but hop into Discord if you want to suggest anything. Um, we have a lore request channel, uh, and then of course, if you're a patron, you get like a higher tier of request where we take that a lot more seriously instead of just like you know humoring the children in general more than anything. Um, yeah. A big thank you to our newest patrons. I think did we get two this week? Uh, at least one. Yeah, Chris von Schiss, uh, right. gold medal for best name among the lore folk. <laughs> um, I hope you're a centuries old count. He's uh, from Germany. I played Valheim with him before. It's cool oh, guy. okay. Good, yeah. yeah. Fantastic name, and thank you for the support so much. Um, thank you to all our other existing uh, and former patrons, because uh, if you pay for that luxury, you keep it. Uh, we don't, like, take back the Discord rank or anything like, like that. Like, yeah, your name's not read anymore, you dick. <laughs> sort of thing. Um, and then if you want to check out some separate work that we do, um, you can check out uh, Squared Idea. I say we, uh, that was a uh, misnomer. Uh, it's just me. If you want to check out my publisher and some of our work together, then you can check out them. Um, yeah. Now, as far as like alternative financial institutions go, obviously, uh, we, you know, we have a tenuous relationship with Patreon uh, due to the edgelord nature of our work. Um, and now, uh, Jamie, I had an offer. Um, but I don't know if you want to save this one for next week. Do you have an offer for Lore Boys Prime, which is ah. like, that's the real money maker right there? I'd love to hear yours. Yeah, so what we were thinking um, is that if you can, if you can just like find your uh, like favorite passage in the Bible, okay, um, and then take those numbers like, you know, 216, All right. send us the amount of money corresponding to that passage. So in that case, it would be, you know, $2.16. Right. And we will make uh, whatever God was promising happen. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's a 216, you know, 216. There's no pennies in Canada. So we'd have to round down to 215, you know, that whole thing. So maybe you can get a bargain on a passage, something like that. But we're here to fulfill your um, whatever prophecies you've been 
looking for, you know, yeah. even if it's just like retribution or maybe forgiveness for your brother, find us the passage, pay us the relevant amount. We will be checking. Yeah. Um, I've been trying to get water to wine. So I've been doing a lot of research by turning wine into water by drinking it and peeing it out. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to try and reverse uh, engineer that. So I might have to uh, like a, like a straw suck up wine through my, my junk and then spit out, uh, does it, how does it work? Would I have to suck up water? I don't know. Well, I'm going to go back to, to the drawing board on this. And I hopefully think we if can you can do more. whatever the male version of Kegels is, you okay. could probably suck liquid up through your penis. <laughs> <laughs> I think like there is a comedian who had uh, a bit about that and saying, like, oh, imagine you have something stuck behind the couch and you can't quite reach it with your hand and just go <laughs> and pick it up. I don't know why you couldn't do that. that easier? <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to move it's your couch, easy. your whole fucking body's in the way. It's not like having an arm. No, yeah, you're right. I guess maybe you're... No, I don't know. Well, you know what? I'm going to get to the drawing board, and I'm going to try it. Even a vacuum only has, like, a five-inch range. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> Which is already better than I'm doing, so... Uh, <laughs> I right. guess that constitutes... Lore Boys. Oh, uh, Lore Boys. Uh, Pulling out. <laughs> Um, my favorite type of chairs have three legs, because the fourth one, who needs it, really? Um, now, th consider this. My name is Peter. I'd like to uh, pose a question to the post-credits audience, if, if we're going to keep this one here. The, okay. the real, the fucking lifers, right? Right. I'm sitting in a desk chair right now, a lazy boy on wheels, right? Yeah. Now, is it one leg with a foot with five star displayed out toes? Or is my lazy boy being on five wheels? Does it have five legs and like, just like a long waist? Think about uh, the, it. The five splayed toes is like a really graphic. Uh, like, it, it, imagine a, a biological like a being. Hand. <laughs> it's like a hand, right? Yeah, it is like a hand, I guess. I'm like, I, I am, you know, astride the monkey's paw itself, like all five fingers spread out. <laughs> oh my lanta. <laughs> 